Hello, good day. Welcome to the webinar uh, for intermediaries for the first call for technical assistance. Okay, well, um, maybe we already start uh, because we do have a, a pretty uh, active agenda today. Uh, there is, uh, we're really excited about this webinar. I'm really glad you're joining us today from different parts of Europe, uh, hopefully, but also from our focus countries. Uh, so today's we already the call for technical assistance was open on the 15th of June, and we already had a first launch webinar, which was on the 23rd of June, and you can find uh, um, the recording of that webinar online as well. Today, the idea of this webinar is to go through uh, application process in a bit more detail, and I'm going to share the screen here. I hope you can see that. Yes. Um, we're going to go through the application process, but also during this webinar, we have with us uh, representatives of the Covenant of Mayors and also of the Smart Cities Marketplace, as we would like to show how the Covenant of Companies is also collaborating with the other initiatives and for you to understand how it all fits together. Um, maybe the first thing that I wanted to do before we open, before I give floor to our Project Officer Garrett to open the webinar is uh, to introduce what are intermediaries because it's already in our, in our uh, title of the webinar. Uh, so what we mean by intermediaries in the Covenant of Companies is basically the national authorities, national bodies, associations and network organizations that interact with the applicant, uh, be it the SME, but also enabler or group of companies to help and improve their operation and, and to help them decarbonize. So intermediaries, as you'll learn uh, through this webinar, can also apply for the technical assistance, but they're also as a body that is helping SMEs or the group of companies to apply for the technical assistance. So with that in mind, I'll first uh, let Georg introduce uh, what is the Covenant Companies and what is our goal, and then uh, I'll go briefly through the agenda and the rules for today. Georg. Yeah, thank you, Lucia, um, and welcome everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to set the scene if you want. I will keep it short uh, in the interest of everybody. So what is the Covenant of Companies? The Covenant of Companies is pretty much um, a new pilot initiative, which we launched uh, um, following a bit the spirit of the Covenant of Mayors, um, but uh, with a focus on uh, companies and a specific focus on SMEs. What we want to achieve is actually helping with um, the journey to climate neutrality. Um, or decarbonizing business operations in Europe. And um, we have a number of uh, ideas on this. And uh, one, one important pillar here is, of course, uh, the technical assistance, um, for which you have uh, probably applied or will do so uh, in the near future. Um, we also have with us, as uh, Lucia already said, um, the Covenant of Mayors, um, the Smart Cities Marketplace, um, simply because 75% um, of the EU's population live in cities, and there is an obvious uh, sort of play field we also want to tap into, not exclusively, but it seems to be a very great opportunity to do uh, that in a more inclusive and more, let's say, um, integrated manner when we speak about companies in that urban context. Um, I would also like to welcome, because I think I forgot last time, um, uh, the partners from uh, SME United, um, so I see that Veronique is with us. Um, um, uh, SME United is, is a very important network and also partner in the Covenant of Companies um, team. So with that, and with no further ado, because I guess that uh, the colleagues from the Covenant will give you all the details you need to know, um, I would give back the floor to Lucia, I guess. So thank you very much. Enjoy the webinar. And uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions, I'd say. Thank you very much. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Gerd. And indeed, we, uh, we welcome asking questions. I will here go briefly through the agenda so that you know what we have in store for us today. So as you heard, we had a welcome by, uh, by Georg and a bit of introduction here uh, from me. And then we also have our colleague, my colleague, Laura May from Prospects, who will be helping me with moderation and also following up on your questions. Prospects is also a consortium partner for Covenant Companies. Then we'll have a short, uh, let's say, a uh, uh, speech from uh, Veronique from SME United. SME United is our consor consortium partner. Uh, SME United brings together 
um, the associations and networks helping the crafts and the SMEs uh, decarbonize. And also um, she'll, she'll introduce a bit on that. Uh, then we also have with us Thibault um, Maraki from, I'm sorry if I said that. <laughs> Uh, not uh, not correctly, from Covenant of Mayors, and he'll introduce briefly what the Covenant of Mayors is doing in this perspective also towards uh, the companies. And then we have uh, Birgit van der Velde from Smart Cities Marketplace, who will also briefly introduce what Smart Cities Marketplace is. Uh, now here, as you see, there is no necessarily foreseen time for question and answer, but we will allow uh, one question after each presentation if there is a burning question. Uh, the main part for the questions is after I have presented the how to apply process. So as you'll see, I will try to be relatively brief and really focus on the application procedure. Um, if you have any other questions in regards to the call, uh, feel free to ask. We have some already prepared, let's say some, uh, some uh, suggestions to the answers of those. And then also uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. You can turn on your camera at some point if you want also to ask questions that way. And then we'll have concluding remarks from Georg. So some of the logistics uh, for today, uh, as I mentioned, use the chat for, for your questions. I will follow that, uh, Laura will follow that and she'll interrupt me if we have uh, uh, questions and that need answering. Uh, microphones I think are off by default, but you can uh, turn it on if you, if you like that. And you can also turn on your camera. And of course, if you have any thoughts that you would like to post on social media, you can use the hashtag Covenant of Companies. Uh, we also use social media for, for these sort of things. So without uh, taking more of the time, I would like to introduce first Veronique. Uh, Veronique is uh, Secretary General of SME United. She has uh, 20 years experience working with SMEs. She previously had a role also for the SME United member in Belgium. And as I mentioned, SME United is a Covenant Companies um, cons uh, consortium members. So she's very much involved with her activities. And uh, please, Veronique, take the floor. Uh, she'll let us know a bit about how SME United and its members are helping companies decarbonize. Yes, thank you, Lucia. And uh, also thank you for again organizing uh, the, the workshop today because I think it's very important um, as Georg also mentioned, to, to get as many people on board uh, to fight climate change as possible. Um, I'm going to give a bit of an idea of what SME United is doing and maybe briefly on SME United as well. So as you mentioned, we represent uh, crafts and SMEs in Europe. We have uh, around 67 member organizations uh, from over 30 European countries. Uh, we are a recognized employers organization and in that way also a European social partner. So we negotiate uh, with the other uh, employers and trade unions on, on labor law and so on. Uh, and of course, representing uh, SMEs at the European level, we have a lot of discussions with European institutions, uh, exchanges. Um, we have horizontal organizations in all the different countries in Europe, and we also have sectoral organizations from, for instance, from the construction sector, uh, the uh, food sector, transport sector, and so on. Um, if I look at what activities we develop to support SMEs in the energy and the green transition, then I think the first one that I would mention is information to our members, um, making sure that organizations for crafts and SMEs across the European Union are informed about the legislation that is uh, that is coming up is a very important one, making sure that they are up to date. Um, giving information is the basis to know what is coming up and to also allow organizations and entrepreneurs to prepare for new, uh, for new demands. Um, that's the first one. The second one is representing the interests of SMEs towards the European institutions, other stakeholders and in social dialogue. And that's the core uh, activity for SME United. Uh, it's representing its advocacy of those uh, SME views. The main aim there is to influence the European policy and legislation from the beginning. Uh, and we have as a slogan or as a mission, shaping Europe for SMEs, shaping SMEs for Europe. And that first part, of course, is the, is the core element. Shaping Europe for SMEs means that we want to develop an, an SME-friendly policy in the European Union so that companies can thrive. That means getting in touch with the Commission and acting on other European stakeholders uh, from the reflection phase 
of policies uh, or legislative proposals and then follow that through uh, the whole uh, legislative process. Of course, discussing also with members of European Parliament and the member states in the Council. Of course, also not forgetting uh, the other consultative bodies. We also have a close cooperation with the European Economic and Social Committee and with the Committee of the Regions to make sure that we link with civil society and also with the regions, because of course they're very close to, to our companies as well. Um, if I look at recent legislation, I can give you a few examples of our work there. Uh, the climate law that was adopted in 2021 um, there we managed to achieve that SMEs are included in the key actors that the Commission have to, has to consider when they start proposing further stricter CO2 emissions uh, reduction targets after 2030. Um, if we look at uh, the recently published eco-design for sustainable products, there we have in Article 19 specifically a series of measures to support SMEs which also mirror a lot of the, the ideas that came up from our members. Um, apart from that, we also create an SME dialogue and we, we try to, to invest in discussing with, with a broader range of stakeholders to get the, the characteristics of small companies better understood throughout the European uh, uh, network. We are members of, of several committees and working groups that are set up by the European Commission and also by the agencies. Uh, for instance, the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. It's a body that was set up by the Commission and the European Economic and Social Committee uh, to foster a, a circular economy in the EU through a, a closer cooperation of the different actors in the society. Um, we also worked together with the European Social Partners on a study last year uh, to understand the real impact of circular economy on jobs and working conditions in the member states. So that was a second element that we do. Then a third and very important one is training and awareness raising. Uh, we are organizing on a regular basis uh, webinars for our member organizations so that they can also use that information to go to their companies. For instance, this morning we organized the last uh, of a series on uh, sustainability, where we have created leaflets with the live program on certain sectors uh, to show SMEs how they can take small steps to go green. Uh, and also provide them with some examples on how other colleague uh, entrepreneurs already made that journey. And then uh, a last one is uh, projects. Um, we are, of course, involved now in this very important project, Covenant of Companies. But before, we have also been involved uh, in the R2PI project, where we were looking into preconditions uh, for circular economy to flourish in specific sectors, construction sector, food, ICT, plastics, textile, and so on. We were also part of the European Resource Efficiency Knowledge Network, uh, where we looked into how you can uh, foster resource efficiency. And we are also involved in the Small Business Standards Project, also a very important one when you look at, uh, at the greening of our economy, because we have to make sure that the standards for green, for circular, and so on, are also adapted to small companies. And then finally, closing words on why we are very happy that we are part of the Covenant of Companies uh, Consortium. First of all, uh, we want to check what the uh, opportunities are for energy transition to SMEs and also which challenges they face when developing that energy transition. Secondly, we want to give uh, some of our members and our um, uh, and their members, SMEs, the chance to receive the technical assistance that we will be discussing here today. And we also want to make sure that uh, we can contribute to the recommendations uh, that we will make at the end of the project towards the European Commission to set up a more permanent uh, support structure for companies to go green and specifically for this project to have the energy transition. I hope uh, I gave you some inspiration and I'm curious to listen to the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Veronique. Uh, thank you for this overview. And indeed, uh, while we're really glad to have SME United on board, uh, the technical assistance call is also open to other associations and networks, not just SME United members. But I do know that here on the call, we sure have SME United members and we're glad that uh, SME United is helping reach out to the network as much as possible. 
thank you for that. I would like to, in the in the sake of time, let's say, I would like to move on to and ask uh, Thibault if he can please uh, join us for the presentation of what Covenant of Mayors is doing. Thibault is a project manager at the Energy Cities, and he's been working with the Covenant of Mayors now for uh, two years in the different roles, I understand. And uh, he'll let us know how uh, these two initiatives, Covenant of Companies and Covenant of Mayors, can work together. Thibault, please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, and, and thanks a lot for the, for the invitation and organizing this, this event. Uh, I will just try to share uh, my screen very quickly. All right. OK, so hope you can you can see it. Um, so thanks again. My name is Thibault. Uh, I work for Energy Cities, indeed. Um, and today I've been asked to talk about the Covenant of Mayors. Um, so in the in the last decades, let's say the role of cities uh, as key actors in, in addressing the, the climate change have been uh, widely recognized, I would say. And, and the Covenant of Mayors um, is, is um, illustrating very well this, this role. Um, so very quickly, the Covenant uh, of Mayors is uh, a European initiative that uh, ena enables cities to develop and implement local uh, energy uh, action plan. Um, and in this slide, you can see the evolution of the, um, of the initiative starting from 2008 with the launch uh, until today with, uh, with the new actually uh, chapter of, of the initiative integrating the, the climate neutrality objective, the tr just transition, so trying to be aligned with the, let's say, the EU legislation. Uh, so this initiative is, is open to any, uh, let's say, cities of any kind, of any size, of any um, forms. And uh, cities are actually required to submit what we call a CCAP, so Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan, uh, including a baseline emission inventory. And then this initiative is supported by different um, stakeholders. Uh, first of all, the, um, the EU Covenant Office uh, that, I, that I'm working for, uh, and, and we assist signatories uh, in the Covenant adhesion process. We organize different capacity building activities, um, we do as well some networking and facilitate exchange and ensure that the promotion of, of the covenant and of, uh, is, uh, signa of the signatories. So there is as well the, the Joint Research Center that provides technical um, support for cities in developing their um, sustainable energy action plan. They developed a whole methodology on that and there are some supporting as well structures uh, in the different uh, EU member states um, such as regions, provinces, uh, national governments as well, to help uh, municipalities in implementing and, and to moving forward in their climate and energy transition. Uh, I said, what is, what is new? Uh, so this year, we actually launched a new phase of, of the covenant uh, by integrating the, the objective of climate neutrality in the commitment of cities. Uh, as well as, as I said, ensuring uh, just transition for all uh, and the concept of local climate pact. And I think this is very important in, in this context. Um, so bringing all the citizens and all the, let's say, the, the stakeholders uh, and companies to achieve the, the city's objective. Um, as of today, the, well, the, the increase of, of signatories uh, in the number of signatories over the years have been actually constant, um, including as of today more than 10,000 uh, signatories and hundreds of, of supporters um, and coordinators uh, supporting the, the signatories in their journey. Um, and, and finally, to maybe conclude uh, this very brief presentation, um, cities were the first to actually act on energy, one of the first to act on energy and climate um, issues and, and the initiative such as the Covenant illustrate very well uh, this, this dynamic and, and the voice of, of cities at your level. Um, and, and more than ever, I think the role of cities in EU, in the EU uh, is, is recognized and acknowledged um, when we see the number of initiatives 
that relates to to cities um, but cities still need to um, transition faster uh, to respond to the climate crisis uh, and for that there are a number of aspects or challenges that should still be addressed uh, and tackle that all level of, of governance so um, and today I wanted to highlight actually on, on the fourth point on this slide, the local pacts uh, and the fact that municipalities um, need to rely on, on, on a number of um, stakeholders uh, at local level, they, can, they cannot do the, the transition on their own. Um, so they, they are actually aligned in supporting the decarbonization of, of companies by establishing alliances um, and pacts at local level. And that's why we, we push uh, to engage municipalities in this type of, of collective dynamics, relying on, on this um, ecosystem of, of factors, um, working together towards the, the same um, objective. Um, and they can actually, uh, municipalities can, can help companies in accessing funds, in um, giving technical expertise, in, and in bringing as well uh, different companies together to, to pool resources, equipments, for example. So to find out if your city uh, is a signatory of, of the covenant, you can uh, consult directly our website, eumayors.eu. And uh, I think I will I will stop here. So thanks a lot, and uh, wishing you a good webinar. Thank you, Thibault. Thanks. Uh, we're also looking forward to uh, finding out the best ways how we can make uh, how we can uh, see that the cities and and the companies collaborate in this decarbonization action. And I think in collaboration with the Covenant Mayors, that's the right partner here. But we also have with us uh, Birgit van der Velde. Uh, she's a researcher. Uh, from Vito uh, Energyville in Belgium, and uh, she's an expert in energy certification and smart buildings and cities. Uh, she has been involved in smart cities information systems project and now is managing smart cities marketplace. Uh, Birgit, please uh, tell us how smart cities marketplace and covenant companies can work together. Thank you for the introduction, Lucia. I will indeed focus on the marketplace and more specifically on what in, is in there for the covenant of companies. Um, just a short introduction. What is currently known as the Smart Cities Marketplace is the result of the merger of what was formerly known as the EIP SEC Marketplace and SKIS. SKIS is the Smart Cities Information System a project that ended in 2020. Uh, which was mainly a knowledge repository where um, there was a self-reporting tool where um, city projects could enter their data on savings and others. So those two are now merged into the Smart Cities Marketplace. The aim of the Smart Cities Marketplace is to have a one-stop shop for everyone looking in to bring smart cities and solution and projects into the market. Uh, in this short presentation, I will mainly focus on the uh, matchmaking and the action clusters, because I think these are of most importance to the covenant of companies. But before we move on, maybe also good to mention that the current contract ends in August this year, but a uh, tender for a new contract was launched and they're uh, supposed to start soon. But in the tender specification of this new contract, there were some changes uh, compared to the current project that might be of interest for the companies as well. So I will highlight those. Um, the matchmaking we um, we see as a funnel uh, with the explore shape and the deal phase. In the explore phase, we see what is out there, which smart city solutions are being tested, are being implemented, what are their barriers, what are their successes, what's um, what are key factors in becoming them to become a success, uh, both from technical point of view, but also financial, working together with the citizens, having their engagement. So we look at what's in there, we gather the knowledge and we spread it through the community. We, uh, for example, have our solution booklets, which are very popular there on the website, so you can easily find them. Um, next phase is the shape phase, where we assist projects that enter the funnel that's possible through the website with an intake form, uh, where we help them to mold their project ID to become more viable, to have a higher project maturity, so they can move on to the next step, which is the deal phase, where we try to link uh, 
potential projects uh, with investors. We have an investor network to see, um, and then we see which are the best fits and how we can bring those projects to um, the ground. Um, I've mentioned there the next term, some um, changes there. Um, what's Im most important is that we will focus more on consortia, not just merely cities, but projects consortia involving besides one or more cities or municipalities, also SMEs or um, local industries, because the aim is to focus on small and mid-sized cities as they represent a huge amount of citizens in Europe. And we know that certainly in those smaller local contexts, there is a good um, working relation with uh, local companies and to see how we can um, make this easier to uh, work together because they know the local context, they know the city. So that would be an advantage to implement some projects. Another thing that um, is for the next contract is that there will be paid more attention to the shape phase to really ensure that the projects, project ideas come uh, really of high project maturity level, so we can link them with investors. There will be one-on-one -on -one consultancies for specific projects so that we actually bring projects to the ground. And also it's important that there is a commitment-driven approach uh, that we get the knowledge from the projects that went through the funnel so their knowledge can feed back into our explore zone. We learn from them as well and we know um, what's what went wrong and what went good there um, possible things that could be of interest for companies on knowledge things uh, i think of procurement issues uh, looking into new business models like public private partnerships uh, ways of alternative finance and how they can uh, be tackled within the light of smart city projects Talking of business models brings me to the next topic, which is on action clusters. The image you see on the right is the current structure. Our action clusters are assemblies of experts that work as volunteers in sharing knowledge and expertise with peers um, on specific topics. One of them is on business models and finance, for example. And they also have thematic initiatives that bring knowledge more into practice. In the next term, uh, it will be transformed into a more flexible structure with ad hoc working groups, um, for which we also foresee an online collaboration space, which will also be opened up for our project consortia. So um, I think there's really good um, possibilities there for uh, companies to combine their efforts with cities and then look into how to create a more sustainable environment. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Birgit. Uh, you keep mentioning the next term. When is the next term starting? When do we expect this? As far as I know, it's planned for mid-August, but maybe Georg can share his view on this. Yeah, if if, if fine, uh, Lucia, I would just uh, um, give give a few comments on, on actually both uh, presentations. So first of all, mm -hmm. next term, yes, mid of August, ideally a bit earlier even. Um, so that's we, it's in the process. And I can't tell more, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, what Birgit just said about the commitment-driven approach. So uh, as you see, there is an obvious link between the Covenant of Mayors and the marketplace already, because um, the cities under the Covenant of Mayors come with a commitment, a clear commitment to become climate neutral. Um, um, more and more of them are actually adhering to the 2050 goals. And then the marketplace obviously can kick in with that a specific financing support, capacity building support, and so on. The same is then, of course, true if we if we do the triangle, uh, including the covenant of companies, really looking in that dimension of of city consortia. Um, so um, companies, cities, uh, looking together, maybe across cities and companies, even so, so also building bigger consortia into that climate neutrality journey. Um, in this case, in the urban context, um, um, but uh, still, there is there is very strong synergy, and I think that says it all. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Georg, and thank you, Birgit. And then I would like, if that's okay for everybody, to move on to the presentation on how to apply for technical assistance and what, what is the technical assistance, and then we'll open up for questions. 
Um, let me share the screen again here. Um, I hope that you see that now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So um, one thing that that is sort of uh, that was mentioned by Gil, but I just want to underline is that a covenant of companies currently is in a pilot initiative of European Commission. And what we're trying to do within this pilot initiative of two years is to find ways that uh, we can work with companies, with intermediaries, to encourage and support companies in their contribution to the clean energy transition. And how does the technical assistance play there is that the aim of the technical assistance is to experiment and evaluate uh, which approaches work, and then to derive which are the most impactful formats to support SMEs in this energy transition. So just keep that in mind that this is a, a pilot initiative and a testing phase so that we understand what works so that hopefully once this is over in two years, then we can uh, say, okay, these are the recommendations of what could work, which are the best approaches for a, a permanent structure of the covenant of companies. So who can apply for the technical assistance? Those are uh, somehow the concrete questions. Uh, because it's a pilot phase, we're uh, using this first technical assistance call to focus on five countries. And in this way, we tried to have geographical uh, distribution across Europe, but also to include diversity in a sense uh, of uh, how are the companies working with their intermediaries, with the authorities and enablers, so that we have a difference between these, uh, th these countries and also difference between the countries that have maybe history in implementation of uh, energy transition towards the companies like Netherlands and those that have a bit of less of that history so that we see which aspects work for which ones. And then uh, we keep mentioning who can apply from the point of view of the type of applicant. So there is four types of applicants that we include in this call for technical assistance. These SMEs, then there is group of companies and there can be SMEs uh, together with the large companies. Uh, and we uh, have enablers and authorities, which we, we call also intermediaries. Enablers are more network organizations, um, associations. Uh, they're the ones that are not necessarily defining the support mechanisms for SMEs, but they're helping SMEs maybe apply for funding. It could be also ESCOs that are helping SMEs implement those uh, measures. And then authorities are the either national, regional, local authorities that are actually defining the, the support schemes. So they can support the SMEs to apply for this code, but they can also apply themselves. Um, what does the technical assistance include? We have uh, in the call for technical assistance, there is a sort of menu of advisory services. We have 17 advisory services and an option for an open application. One should choose one of the 17 advisory services or they choose open application, but either way, even if they choose one of those that we propose, they should still explain what do they mean by, by the advisory service that they need. I provide here the beginning of the table because the table is a bit long to, to include and for you also to read, but what we tried to do there in the guide for applicants is to say which uh, technical assistance applies to which type of applicants. So for example, not all apply to authorities uh, in case there is uh, a start like this, that means that this technical assistance would be directly provided to SMEs or a group of companies, but the training on how to do this together with SMEs could be provided to authorities or enablers. And then we also provide recommended uh, application, meaning uh, in which phase of the decarbonization the company is, because this Explore Shape Act is only applied to the companies or the group of companies, so only to the companies. Uh, meaning how far are you in your decarbonization action? And for that, we have a self-assessment tool, which I'll mention uh, later on. So this is sort of the explanation, but you can find all this in the guide for applicants. Then the question is, when does the technical assistance happen? So the call is open right now, uh, and it will, it will be open until 31st of August. And you will see as we go through the application process that it's relatively easy to fill in the application. We really try to be as simple as possible to an online application and to include uh, the least requirements so that uh, this is not a burden to, to apply for the technical assistance. Uh, once, so once the applications are in, then we start the evaluation and we'll, we should have the outcome of communicated by, by end of September. So in September, 2022, and then the technical assistance will happen in the period from end of September. So from October to January, 2023. 
there is a second call for technical assistance, which is completely separate from the first call for technical assistance, because as I mentioned earlier, it's a testing phase. So in the first call, we will evaluate in, at the end and see what worked and what didn't work. We'll also evaluate if we stay with the focus countries or if we extend to other countries or maybe choose different countries for the second call, which will happen in the March, 2023. So how, how do you apply? We have these two documents where we try to be uh, comprehensive in our explanation of the application process and the whole process that will go through technical assistance. That's in the guide for applicants. You can find it online. I put a QR code here, but maybe Laura can put uh, links or at least in the chat for you. But there is also a quick, quick guide to application, which is more, if you don't have time to read all the details, you just want to see what is it about and see if this is interesting for you. But what, is it, what does it really include? I mentioned the application form and we'll walk through it in a minute. Uh, there is the online application form and then for companies uh, only, there is two additional requirements that we ask and that's the certificate of registration. It's a PDF document. It can be in your uh, local language, of course, and uh, that number and then the self-assessment tool. The self-assessment tool is basically five questions asking about how far are you in your decarbonization process? Have you committed to some targets? And have you done energy efficiency audits or implementation of any of the measures? These are basically the five questions that just uh, for us give some indication, where are you right now? And what is sort of your aim? Where, where are you headed? So before I step into the online application form, I just want to go and say, what is the role of intermediary? Because at the beginning we mentioned intermediary, we say that authorities and enablers can be intermediaries, but they can also apply for technical assistance. If they're applying for technical assistance, then they're applicants, obviously, but they can, uh, we see them also as the role of intermediary, meaning uh, the person or the, the company or the institution between the covenant companies and the SME or the group of companies. Why is that useful? Because SMEs and group of companies, uh, companies typically are used to working with the associations, they're used to working with authorities. Um, and in a lot of cases, especially with SMEs, they're not necessarily used to working on the EU level. So it's good to have that, uh, let's say what they're used to and the sort of the framework where they know how to work. These could be SME United members, it could be signatories of covenant of mayors, but it could also be other, uh, other authorities, other enablers that are out there. And they are involved in the application process, meaning that uh, you're here today, you learn how this process works, you typically know how the application processes work. So you help, uh, let's say, spread the word, but also help the companies apply if they need help to apply. But then through technical assistance and when deciding on uh, which companies, which, uh, which applicants will be taken on for the technical assistance, we have these uh, meetings directly with the shortlisted applicants where we discuss with them what is the scope and the timing of the assistance they suggested they would like to have so that we understand if we can actually support them. And there we will try to ask intermediary to participate. How do we know which one in the application process? In the application form, we ask of the applicant if there is um, an association or an enabler uh, or authority that they're used to working with. If they don't provide one, then we try to, uh, to find one that we think is the most, uh, most accurate. If there is no one, then they're not necessary to be there. We can also communicate directly, but we think it, it would be better because also for the technical assistance and then for the evaluation of the technical assistance, because uh, authorities uh, and network associations, um, they are more, uh, let's say, um, they know how different companies are working. They know how the companies in their network are working and they know what they need. So when they go with us and with the applicant through the technical assistance, they follow it, they can give us evaluation and say, this would be useful for the rest of our members or it would not be useful or this needs to be done differently. So they, they can really give us that support. So uh, for before we go into the questions, I will open the online application form and I'm hoping that you still see my screen. Um, yes, it's still on the slide. It's still on the slide. Okay, so I need to stop sharing and then share the application form. If it opened, just a second, sorry. Here we go. Uh, okay. Do you see 
the application yes. form? Yeah? We do, yes. Okay. So this is the application form. It's an EU survey. Uh, it's, as I mentioned earlier, there is, because the Covenant Companies does not have a website yet, the website should be coming up in August. We really tried here. So most of the information is at DGNR website. It's also on our members website, on SME United uh, website, also on Smart Disease Marketplace. You can find the link to this. But we try to put as, many, as much information in the initial introduction of the application form as possible. And there you can also find links to the quick guide and the detailed guide for applicants and also the email to our help desk, which if you have any additional questions. There is uh, the recordings of the first webinar and there is going to be the recording of this webinar so that you can see uh, the application process. So let's say here you go and you choose the country that, uh, that you're coming from. If it's one of the countries which is not a focus country, we provide, for example, we provide information about other initiatives that we know that we've researched, that we know about, uh, that provide support to companies. If you think that there is an initiative that should be here and is not here, or there is a new project that you think is very useful and it's not here, please let us know. And then if we go, for example, under Croatia, which is one of the focus countries, then you see uh, there is basic information that is inputted about the applicant. Then you choose uh, which type of applicant you are. Let's say you're an authority. Uh, then we ask about the carbonization. It could be uh, that this is applicable to you or not. Uh, we ask if you currently provide any financial or support to the SMEs. Uh, very important question is how much resources can you, can you provide, let's say, to working with the Covenant Company so that we know how much can you be engaged on your side. Uh, what motivates you in this process? It could be an obligation, of course. It could be that there is other motivation as well. What do you expect uh, to get out of technical assistance? And of course, the language question. The language question is important for us that we know if we can support fully what, what you're asking, but that's also something that we'll discuss during the, uh, the online meeting with the shortlisted candidates. So this is not a deciding question, but it's something that, that we need to know. And then the question for authorities, which are your national, regional, or local. And then you'll see here for authorities, there's a shorter list of technical assistance because all the 17 ones that we suggested is mainly for SMEs. And then the ones that are really for authorities or enablers, this is a shorter list, but you can also choose other, if not one of these. And then for either if you choose one that we provided or another one, you please elaborate and that's it, you submit. The main difference, as I mentioned earlier, is that if you're an SME, as I choose here, if you're an SME, then you have to provide a VAT number, uh, you upload your registration form, certificate of registration, and then you go to the self-assessment tool, which is in Excel, of five questions, you finish it, you save it, and you upload it here. So those are the two things that you just need to, to add. You choose your, again, support, and then you provide information. So I will stop here so that I'm not taking time from the questions. And please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask here. Um, also, if, if you don't have questions now, it's a lot of information. You can always contact us at the help desk. Um, the call is open until end of August, and uh, we really hope that you apply. Super. Thank you so much, Lucia, for that excellent overview. And we have had a couple of questions that have come in um, through the chat. So first of all, is it possible for a large company to apply by themselves for this call for technical assistance? Thanks, Laura. We, we've received this question. Uh, right now, that's not a possibility. So what, we've see, uh, what we see as the type of applicants is we really try to focus on SMEs because the support for SMEs we see is really uh, lacking, so to say, and the large companies are right now included in the group of companies. So it would be, let's say, companies in the same area or in the same building that are working, so a large company working with the smaller uh, companies. Supply chains is something that has been uh, a lot discussed. It is not a part of the first call for technical assistance because it's a bit more complicated. So it's something that we're looking into how to approach and first understand what is it that the, the companies are asking as a support in the first call for technical assistance and then see maybe in the second call for technical assistance we we open this up i also see that garrick has a hand up and he wants to comment on that so please yeah i i guess this is also a bit um a bit of a strategic question here and i just wanted to to signal also from from commission end 
um, that of course uh, um, large companies are not excluded. I mean that should, we should say very clearly but that this first call is sort of concentrating on SMEs. Um, also, when it comes to a po possible continuation of the covenant of companies, we will surely also look more into the supply chain idea. But for this rather short pilot, we decided not to do that. So, but this doesn't mean that you should not be involved, engaged, um, interested, um, following us, and so on. So, this is uh, not at all meant like this. We, of course, include in our considerations also large companies. So, but very concretely for this one, for this first call, we concentrated on SMEs. Just wanted to flag that very clearly also from my end. Thank you very much. Now we've actually had a related question, which is in this call, is it possible for a collaboration of a large company in conjunction with an SME to apply? Yes, for sure. That's uh, what we see as a group of companies. And uh, that's definitely something that, that that is something that we're looking for, yeah. Super, so when they're going the application form, they'll just put the group of companies then? Yes. yes. Okay, sounds good. And we've had another question just now about whether there's an own financing requirement for SMEs, and if so, what is the rate? What is the component? So there is, so this is not a financing call. Yeah, we're also mm -hmm. not providing necessarily funding. We're providing technical assistance. And in that sense, uh, the let's say the engagement of the applicant is necessary. So um, we we don't require them to provide any, any financing. It's what do you want? What do you want to get? Of course, from the technical assistance, you will get more if you are collaborating more with with us, um, and if you're providing us, let's say, more information. But that's something that we that we discussed in that first meeting before the technical assistance agreement is signed. So we have uh, maybe I can share that briefly because that was uh, one of the questions that we had um, in the evaluation process. Uh, let me just share the screen. Sorry. Just a second. Um, okay. Share screen. There we go. So if we go here, da, da, da. so the way that that we see it working is that we'll oh, not that one. Okay. Here. Um, so we receive all the applications by end of August, and then we do the evaluation within the consortium. And we provide, we propose a list of shortlisted applicants. And those shortlisted applicants, of course, that's in, in collaboration uh, with the European Commission. Uh, then we contact those shortlisted applicants to have an online meeting with them, with the experts of Covenant Companies, so that we understand what is the scope and the timing of the support that they would like, but also what is, for example, if they want to do something specific, do you have already data for that? Uh, if we need more of your engagement, can you provide that so that we understand, is that even possible? Can we cover that? Can we cover the language requirement? Can we cover, so th these things are all uh, discussed in this meeting. And then after that, once we meet with all the shortlisted applicants, then we make the final accept the list of applicants. We uh, It's approved by European Commission before we publish where the accepted applicants and the technical assistance agreements are signed. So this is all addressed, of course, it, it cannot all be in, uh, let's say, in the application form, all the details. So we try to keep the application form simple. And then once uh, we meet in person, we discuss that. I saw also that maybe the related question, which was, what is the size of the support? And the size of the support also depends. So it depends how many applications we get and what is required. For example, if we get, let's say, 10 applications that would like to do a similar thing in one country, then maybe we could support one and then have the other ones as, let's say, followers and then provide webinar or workshop so that they're all involved and they all get some sort of benefit from that. So we have direct support, which is, which is going to be provided to the 50 entities, we say, but then we also have indirect support where we see based on the applications that we get, because we don't know what, what we'll get there, then we see where we could provide really support to the followers. So the ones that might not need uh, direct assistance by, by experts, but rather, for example, group them with some other uh, applicants that, that are asking for a similar thing, maybe from the same or from another country, and then provide them uh, support together. I hope that answers that. Thank you. And Georg, did you have something to add to that? 
Um, nothing to add, in fact. Sorry, my, that was an old hand, so I lower it <laughs> now. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, no, I, actually, actually, you're all fine, uh, okay. unless there is a specific question remaining. Um, okay, sorry. thank you. I just wanted to make sure your hand no, is no, addressed. That's fine, that's fine. Okay. All, all. <laughs> And so another question here, so apart from the technical assistance, um, what other activities are gonna be arranged as part of the covenant of companies? So aside from technical assistance, there is other, uh, there is support, let's say a knowledge support to the SMEs. And we also have my colleague Elise, who's been working on that a lot within the covenant of companies. And that's something that's in preparation that will be available from the website. So. Uh, the support to different, where you can find different types of, uh, let's say, support mechanisms, where you can find different financing, where, uh, how do you do uh, science-based targets for companies and so forth. And also there's going to be case studies with those uh, companies that are doing really well so that uh, we show how this could be done, maybe some webinars and workshops with them uh, for the other companies. So this is something that will be available on our website uh, it will be, I think it's, it's much easier, easier when the website there and the information is there. One thing that we've been discussing because we really, this uh, first initial part we took to also communicate with all the other initiatives that are out there for companies. And there, as you know, there is many initiatives out there also in European, but on the world level as well, providing support to companies. Uh, so we see that if there is something that we cannot support or that we're not uh, giving the support to that, that we also uh, provide information where you can find this and who you can contact and what are the other technical assistances that are out there or maybe what are other knowledge, um, let's say, centers where you can find information. Great. And so say if somebody applies as part of this call for assistance and isn't successful for whatever reason, how can they get involved in the future? Uh, so in the in the process, we also ask that you uh, follow us, that you follow our newsletter. Uh, as I mentioned, the ones that are not accepted for direct technical assistance, we will invite some of them for uh, to be followers, depending on the topic. But then, if you're not in either of those groups, we definitely ask you to to follow our activities and to see what's going on. I also somewhere along the lines saw a question about other countries and where they could when they could be involved. Indeed, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is really a pilot. So to make, uh, to understand what works and due to, let's say, of course, every, it's always limited resources for, for you know, covering all of the SMEs, of course. So we try to focus now on five countries and then see, evaluate the first call beginning of next year and then see how to approach the second call. But indeed, both of these calls are part of this testing phase. And then only after two years of covenant companies existing, then we provided this, uh, let's say, proposal of what could be some permanent structure of the covenant of companies and how they could best support all of the European countries and all of the SMEs in there. Great, so yes, just those five countries for now. So Croatia, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, and Finland, super. Okay, we've had a question here as well about what if any kind of funding becomes available if a participating SME develops any kind of um, innovative technology to limit CO2 emissions? I mean, is that part of the scope of this project? So we have under technical assistance an option also to, to try to support, uh, that's one of the advisory services to try to support an applicant in preparation, for example, of an innovative project to find other, uh, let's say, uh, consortium that they could apply with together, or they could work with together, or maybe for funding, they could work together. Um, but they could also become, let's say, uh, they could work with us and become a mentor if they're an example of how a company is doing things. It's all, uh, I think we, we welcome all interactions with SMEs and everything that they're doing in the sense to uh, towards energy transition and decarbonization. And we really want to see how, uh, what is it that, that you need? So we really want to hear from SMEs. We want to hear from the association and the network organization authorities working in, with SMEs. What do you hear that SMEs need and how can we best support that through the common companies? But I see also Georg has a, a new hand up. <laughs> yeah, just again, very quickly. Uh, um, uh, of course, apart from uh, the sort of involvement and engagement of intermediaries, um, 
there is uh, once again uh, an opportunity to team up uh, under this framework of uh, the Smart Cities Marketplace um, in order to receive financing. That's not related to funding, of course, but uh, might be also equally interesting. Um, the other thing, of course, is that for this time being, uh, there is no direct funding uh, um, uh, foreseen under this uh, under this pilot project. Also, under the Covenant of Mayors, by the way, there's no direct funding, but um, a sort of capacity building support, peer learning, and, and that kind of stuff to help uh, signatories, and in this case, intermediaries, to better understand the funding landscape and to also understand what is available on EU level, for example, or, or even member state level, to help with these kinds of uh, activities. That's certainly in the scope of the Covenant of Net Companies to, to help actually um, scanning the landscape and, and knowing uh, what's available and what might be most suitable for the specific journey an SME or company is in. Thank you. And we've got a question here as well from Ivona, and I just want to make sure that I've understood this correctly. I understand that she's asking whether different subcomponents or units that are technically as part of a larger company, whether they can apply. Uh, together with the, with that larger company, or it's not totally clear to me. So let's stick with whether subunits of a company can apply for the meantime, and then hopefully we'll get any clarifications to the question. Well, the, if they're applying as as one for the SME as one applicant, we really use the SME definition, the SME EU definition, and I think that limits also to um, the percentage of the ownership. I want to ask. Maybe Veronique to jump in here because I know that she has this uh, correctly as well. Um, that if the more than twenty five percent of the ownership is under the the investment fund or something like this, then it's not uh, considered an SME. So we use EU definition of SMEs, and I, we can maybe we can put it here in chat so that you can see that. But under the group of companies, it's a bit more flexible. We have not limited. Uh, of course, we want to focus on SMEs, but we have not limited there that uh, the the companies that are interrelated, let's say, can uh, can apply together. York, add the link. To is yes. that another new hand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's a new hand, <laughs> um, or an ongoing hand. Um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, looking, for example, specifically uh, into the situation in Germany, which I know a bit, um, we have uh, like big companies, but which have branches, for example, mm -hmm. and these branches very often are registered as SMEs, uh, so the German uh, acronym is GmbH, um, very often, actually, and um, so, for example, these companies or these branches of the bigger companies could also be considered SMEs, I mean, just to sort of give another example how we could um, uh, treat that specific situation. Thank you. Thank you. And I, we might have more questions, Laura, but I think we have to close here if that's okay. And we, of course, welcome, I, uh, I put somewhere through the presentation, this uh, help desk email, but you can also find it in the guide for applicants and on the application form. And I think we have shared the application form uh, link at the beginning. And if we haven't, uh, yeah, there is at least shared uh, the application form link, so you can use that as well. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us. But now for the closing, I would like uh, to ask Georg if you can please give the, uh, the closing words. And I would like to thank you all. And I really hope that you join us and you apply for technical assistance. Georg. Yeah, 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 I heard it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, was, I was looking for, for the, for the um, actual buttons. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, wrapping it up, um, I, I think uh, what you learned in this webinar is that um, there is um, a large, a big opportunity for European SMEs to, to um, get on board, to, to step up the efforts when it comes to climate neutrality, but that there is also help. Um, and I think this, this specific project um, is uh, all about helping with the transition to, to become uh, low carbon or uh, net zero, climate neutral, whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, we have, I guess we have a, a strong network of partners with us uh, in, in this um, effort. And uh, yeah, would really wish to see uh, uh, many, many applicants from 
the five focus countries, but then also please keep uh, in touch with us uh, either with the, via, via the help desk. There will also hopefully soon be a website so that you will see all the great news and information uh, concentrated and consolidated there. We're in the process of, of uh, implementing that. And yeah, I mean, I would simply invite you to keep in touch, um, sub subscribe to the newsletter, please. And um, also do not hesitate to get in touch with us should you find anything um, which, which is not yet answered or where you have a question, whatever. So I, I guess we are all very curious uh, where this journey is taking us. And um, I hope to see as many companies as possible in this uh, yeah, exciting effort. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited still and um, would wish you all much success with your uh, journeys and, and your help to other companies, uh, so to say. Thank you very much. And thank you for the team, to the team, um, uh, for organizing this um, um, so, so, so smoothly. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to Birgit and Thibault from uh, Smart Cities Marketplace and, and Covenant Mayors. Thank you all for being here. Um, and we hope to hear from you. Thanks.